Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Film Boys Podcast, and welcome to our very special episode of our group season two pitch script. I will be your narrator as well as playing the role of Rocket Raccoon. Hi, I'm Sam. I will be playing the lead role of Botanist 2 and Star-Lord. Hi, I'm Sean. I will be playing Groot and Botanist 3. Hi, I'm Michael. I will be playing the supporting roles of lead botanist Gamora and the other one. Drax. Drax. (laughs) Drax. The other one. Now, Michael, I had to tell you who Drax was. Have you since looked up who Drax is again? You, <laughs> you don't remember, remember who Drax was? No, I like it. I, I didn't want to, you know, as as an artist, I didn't want to copy anyone else's performance. So I really oh, just wanna, want this wow. to be a fresh take on the character. Mm-hmm. I want our fans to know that this is my interpretation. Um, this is a 2022 modern, you know, reimagination of the the character of Drax. So, right, right. You know, just yeah. as just as an artist, I've always been a risk taker, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really risk taking. Yeah. So, yes, this will be a very liberal approach to the role yes. of Drax. Yes, I love it. I love I'm so it. So excited. Love... Thank you. Thank and you. I really hope I do um, justice to botanist too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yeah. lead role, yeah. not not Star Lord. The, the yeah. lead role of Botanist Two. The lead yes. role of Botanist Two. Then the we all know Star Lord. Botanist. Yeah. <laughs> now, Ryan, you wrote this script. Um, I in did. My, in my copy, every W is bolded. So I don't know. Is that something you uh, really wanted us to like emphasize copy a little are bit you more? Looking at, I have no that's, idea. That's just you, Sam. But Acrobat yeah. has decided to bold every W. Why every are you looking at it in Acrobat? Set that to Chrome. Mm, but this then I can't 2022. highlight it. But then I can't highlight it. And I'm an Adobe uh, freak. Sounds like I, it's I'm not a graphic my designer. I gotta use my Adobe. It's like my. Drug. I mean, I have Acrobat too. But if I'm just viewing a file, well, I also Ryan's always been so. Ryan's always been an arse. <laughs> Ryan's always been a risk taker. You know, when it comes <laughs> Did you say to Ryan's writing. always been an arson. No, <laughs> that's what it sounded like. What it was do you going. know? I was gonna say he's always been an artist. No, he's been a. That risk makes taker. sense because this script is on fire. Ow, oh, Ow. stop it. We'll see about that. Be nice in the comments. <laughs> Without further ado, why don't we uh, jump into this, boys? All right, let's do it. All right. I am Groot. Subtitle, Budding Romance. Written by Ryan Sheridan. <laughs> Sounds like a handsome fellow. Uh, and based on Guardians of the Galaxy by Arnold Drake and Gene Colan. And Groot was created by... Stan Lee, Larry Lieber, 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 who knows, and Jack Kirby. (laughs) All right, here we go. Exterior, alien forest, planet, dawn. The sun is beaming down on the edge of a lush green alien forest with an array of multicolored speckles that are flowers in the distance. The Milano, the ship of the Gardens of the Galaxy, sits peacefully in the background. We we rest on a single purple cone-shaped flower. A dragonfly-like alien bug gently lands on it and twitches its legs. Growing in the background is a strange, high-pitched roar. It gets closer until two little branch-like arms whack at the flower, destroying it. We see the rest of the tree-like arms, a baby Groot. I am Groot. The bug hastily flies up and around the tree toddler, avoiding every one of its lunges until it speeds off into the forest. Groot pursues. I am Groot. Exterior alien forest day. Groot seems to have lost the bug until he hears a faint buzz a little further off. A look of rage fills his face. He walks toward the noise, then the bug buzzes past his face. Groot turns and runs to chase again, but trips on a rock and lands face first in the dirt. He gets up and turns and kicks it. I am Groot. After he finishes dealing with the rock, he hears the buzz again, but it pulses. Something is different. Groot slowly turns. The bug is now resting on a different plant. It is a long, slender, pinkish plant with light green thorns growing up its stem. At the top of the plant, it has two open leaves that look like an open book. Groot slowly approaches. The bug does not move except for buzzing its two wings two times. Almost like it can't generate lift. Groot is closer now. He opens his arms and holds his hand as if he is about to clap the bug. I am Groot. Before Groot can bring down his mighty blow, the leaves of the plant close. It crunches up the bug as it lets out buzzes like tiny little screams. Groot 
Groot looks on in amazement. Love struck. I am Groot. Out of nowhere. <laughs> out of nowhere, a trowel comes down and starts to upend the carnivorous plant. A trio of some sort of space botanists are collecting it. They wear uniform yellow, yellow field suits and gloves over their hands. The one digging speaks. Amazing. It's in perfect condition. The second holds up a futuristic sample container. Appears to have recently fed too. Oh Should God. get some fascinating data. <laughs> the lead botanist places the plant in the container and seals it. A third botanist stands over Groot. Impossible. What is it? It's a Groot. I thought they were extinct. Groot tries to back away, but he isn't fast enough. The botanist standing over him reaches down and picks him up by the scruff of his neck. Either way, it's certainly cert Either way, it certainly shouldn't be here. Careful with it. It could be the last of its kind. Botanist 3 places Groot in the container as well. Groot bangs on the glass, but there is no use. He's trapped. Interior, Mil sorry, interior, Milano, engine room, day. The ship is filled with the sounds of a groovy, epic, and royalty-free song. <laughs> Rocket Raccoon is under the floor panels of the ship. Light from the flame of a welding tool pulses. Ah, crap! Rocket rises from under the floor. He lifts his goggles from over his eyes. Groot, get over here! I need your help! No answer. Groot? Interior, Milano, galley, day. Rocket walks up the galley... Sorry, Rocket walks into the galley, wiping his paws off with a rag. He looks up to see Drax the Destroyer slowly eating a bag of Zark nuts. Hey, Tiny, where's Groot? You were supposed to be watching him while I was fixing the ship. I am not Tiny. <laughs> you are Tiny. <laughs> Whatever, where is he? I couldn't see him. You haven't seen him? I couldn't. He turned invisible. Rocket pauses. He can't turn invisible, moron! Then his movement is still. It is invisible to the eye because I couldn't see him. I knew I should have left him with the lovebirds. Spread out and look for him. He could be anywhere on this ship. Interior botanist ship day. The lead botanist enters the ship first, followed by their crew members. The ship is smaller than Milano, seemingly designed for short outings and not for interstellar travel. Botanist 2 goes into the cockpit. The other places the plant down on a console. It is slightly bigger than it was before. Botanist 3 places Groot on the opposite side of the ship. He continues to bang the glass. Stop that. You'll damage your samples. So what's the plan? The ship starts to ascend and Groot can see the trees of the forest start to grow further away from a window nearby. Preserve the Groot. If we're going to try to repopulate the species, I don't want any change of it being any chance of it being damaged. I'll prep for the dissection on this one. Groot hears dissection and gasps. He sees sharp tools next to the plant. We hear a hiss. Botanist three has turned on a small hose with frost emitting from it. He connects it to the top of Groot's container. He looks next to him and sees various plants frozen. He looks at the top of his container and sees the frost starting to enter. The lead botanist picks up a scalpel and brings it towards the plant. Groot looks over to them and then back to the top of the container, then looks out the window. He can see the Milano near the edge of the forest. I am Groot! Groot quick, quickly extends his hands and pops off the hose. We have a breach. Take care of it. Groot hits the top again. Stop that! The lead botanist turns away from the plant. Groot hits, his top, hits the top a third time and it releases. Groot jumps out, clings to the botanist three's face, and starts whacking them with his tree arms. As a lead is turned around, their fingers are in the range of the plant. Bigger than it was before, it unhinges its petal jaw and bites off two of the lead's fingers. They scream in agony, drop the scalpel, and slide down. Their ah. legs go out as they go down. <laughs> Groot is too preoccupied with, the, with his botanist to see what's happening. Botanist 3 is able to get some leverage and throws Groot across the room, but trips backward, backwards over the lead's legs and into the cockpit. Botanist 3 crashes into Botanist 2. Botanist 2 is knocked out unconscious into the flight controls as well as the door release. The doors open and Groot is sucked out. Exterior Alien Forest Planet Day. Groot flies out the ship's doors, free falling. The ship plummets down and crashes. Groot sees the explosion but is too far from the crash site as he gets close to the ground. He extends his arms as he descends the for to the forest. With his extended branches, he's able to hook onto the trees of the forest and swing himself to safety while Spider the Spider-Man Homecoming theme plays. <laughs> he swings his way back to the Milano. 
Interior botanist ship day. The ship has crash landed. We see a fingerless hand of the lead botanist, unmoving. Botanist three has blood dripping from his temple. He tries to stand, but his leg is broken. Is anyone there? Botanist two slowly crawls out from under the rubble. We can only see one side of them. Oh, thank the gods. Can you stand? Botanist two looks to three, and we now see half of their face has been taken off, surrounded by some peculiar bite marks. Botanist three reels back and screams in horror. Ah! We hear the sound of a deep bite. Botanist two shakes for a second and then is dragged back into the rubble. We hear the sound of his screaming while it being eaten. Ah! Botanist three looks away, then looks down and feels something near his legs. Vines moving slowly toward him. No, not moving. Growing. He tries to scoot away without making too much noise. He sees a clearing in the rubble. Freedom. As he's about to scoot to safety. Hiss! He is now faced with the unhinged, flowery jaws of the plant, much larger and scarier than before. Unable to do anything else, Botanist 3 screams. The plant <coughs> lunges to finish its, finish its three-course meal. Interior Milano, Star-Lord's Quarters, Day. Peter Quill, a.k.a. Star-Lord, and Gamora are sitting on a sofa in Star-Lord's Quarters, watching an episode of Knight Rider. I don't get it. He can talk to his ship? It's not a ship. It's a car. What's a car? It's like a ship, but instead of flying, it has wheels. That seems much worse. No, no, no. You don't, you don't get it. Clunk! They look up to see Groot on the ceiling window. He waves. Gamora waves back. Groot? What are you doing up there? Groot! Rocket rushes in. You saw Groot? Star-Lord motions up to the window. Get down from there! I've been worried sick, you little twig! Groot slides down the window. Exterior, Milano, day. Groot drops down from the ship's ramp and walks straight ahead. The gardens are all waiting for him. How many times do I have to tell you not to go walking off all on your... Groot walks right past him on a leisurely stroll. Where are you going? I am Groot. What do you need a gun for? You can't even hold one. I am Groot. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't walk off, disappear, and then come back asking me f- for me to shoot someone. Groot points to Star-Lord. I am Groot. He doesn't tell me to shoot people. I shoot them because I want to, and because we usually get paid when I do. How did I get involved in this? The tree seems to think you are the leader. I am the leader. Please, you couldn't lead a starving Vagal to the, to a Utava orchard. <laughs> Drax <laughs> Bird's <laughs> ass laughing. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha ha. That's funny, because that should be very easy to do. Yes, I, I get it. I am Groot. I am Groot. She? Who's she? I am Groot. Aw, Groot found himself a little flower girlfriend. I am Groot. <laughs> Groot points to a smoke plume in the distance in the direction of the crash site. What happened there? I am Groot. You were on that? I am Groot. Someone tried to take you. That does it for me. Let's go get those guns. Gamora and Drax follow. Starler stands there. That's it? We don't even know who these people are or or what they wanted with Groot. Shut up and make yourself useful, Quill. Interior, Milano Day. Montage. Gamora sheathes her swords. Drax Drax flexes in the mirror. Starler holds up his blasters and points them at the wall. Rocket loads up a much bigger rifle and smirks at him. Groot climbs Rocket's shoulder and beats his chest. The Guardians of the Galaxy descend the ramp and make their way towards the forest. Exterior, Alien Forest Day. The guardians all walk along the forest, the smoke plume getting closer. For a while, no one talks. Rocket interrupts. Now, Groot, with this plant you've met, you might notice some certain feelings as well as other things. The group looks towards him. You're starting to grow from a twig into a strong branch. What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing, Quill? He needs to know these sorts of things. And you want to do it now? Besides, if anyone should give that to him, it should it should be me. Definitely not. I'm the most experienced. Experience and maturity are not the same thing, and you calling it experience is a telling sign of that. So you want to do it? As a child, I was taught a woman's place was on the battlefield. Anything else was a distraction. That's actually kind of morbidly progressive. What about Drax? Hmm. You had a wife and a daughter. Yes, I did. Drax looks down and then up to Groot. Tree. 
I am Groot. When I knew I wanted no other than my Ovet, I journeyed into the wild on my own with nothing but a small knife. I tracked one of the most foul beasts on our planet for three weeks, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. When it came, the beast shook me off easily, but I stood my ground. Our battle lasted for hours. Eventually, after trading blow after blow, oh. strike after strike, I was able to plunge my blade into its heart. I carried its corpse all the way back to my village and placed it at my betrothed's feet, and she accepted my proposal immediately. The days leading up to our joining, there were some objectors who thought she should be theirs instead. I faced them all and killed those who would not yield, one even at the ceremony. Because of this, she knew the depths of my love and that I would do anything to protect her. The guardians of the guardians in the forest are silent. If you truly love someone, you need to show them that you care and take down anyone or anything that would cause them harm. If only I could have done more. Drac Drax walks ahead, followed by Groot. Sorry, followed by Rocket and Groot, still on his shoulder. Hey, uh, that was really nice. Gamora stops and holds back Star Lord as the others carry on. Okay, maybe that was a little bit much. It was a good sentiment, just a little intense. Wow. We should really get Drax to talk to someone. I am Groot. Exterior crash site day. Drax, Rocket, and Groot all stare at the crash site. Star-Lord and Gamora uh, catch up. Whoa, you did that? Groot <laughs>, laughs. The Guardian, Guardians walk into the site and spread out. Gamora sees the smashed remains of all the preserved plants on the ship. They must have been some sort of plant life traders. Most of these species appear carnivorous, poisonous, or... I am Groot. Right, like you. Starler squats down alongside a pile of rubble, finding the partially bitten off hand of the lead botanist. What the hell? Drax looks down the ground to see vines. The forest couldn't have grown over the rubble this fast. Starler stands back up. Hey Groot, what kind of plant did you say we were looking for? Bam, out of a pile of rubble, the mouth of the plant lunges at Starlord. He activates the boosters on his feet and flies out of the way. Quill! Vines snatch up Drax by his ankle and lift him upside down. What the hell is that thing? Groot excitedly stretches out his arms. Rocket understands. Gamora unsheathes her swords and cuts the vine holding Drax. The plant shrieks. Drax drops to the ground. The plant moves towards Gamora, but she swings and slices to keep the leafy beast at bay. Drax gets up. Vines start rising. He pulls out his knives as it... Sorry. He pulls out the knives he keeps sheathed in his boots and lets loose his war cry. He slashes vines down. The plant goes to chase after him, but takes two blasts. Star Lord has a full mask activated and is holding up his smoking blasters. The plant moves towards him. He flies up and over it, blasting as he does. Pow, 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 pow. Rocket, o Rocket opens up his rifle and puts the plant in his sights. Groot looks at him in disbelief. Star Lord is still firing and dodging. That's right. Keep it there, Quill. Just don't get in the way. Rocket starts to squeeze the trigger, his eye in the scope. Then it's shaken away. Ow! Ow! Groot is hitting the side of Rocket's skull. Knock it off! I am Groot! Hate to tell you this, buddy, but your girlfriend seems to be a bit hungry. Sort of flies to dodge a vine, but it hits his booster. He spirals to the ground, landing on his back. Thud. Oh. Hey, can I get a little help with Audrey 2 over here? How many times do I have to tell you? We don't understand your Earth references. Oh. Vines start to reach over Star-Lord's legs and pull him up. The vines near Drax and Gamora, Gamora disarm them and pull them up as well. Rocket looks back. He goes up to raise his rifle again. Vines reach over the gun, but they aren't the plants. They're Groot's. Hey, I told you not to touch my guns. I am Groot. Groot is able to throw the gun away from Rocket. Then vines wrap around Rocket's legs and pull him away. The force causes Groot to fall from his shoulder. The plant pulls him up next to his flowery face. Its flowery face. Groot looks up to see all four guardians held up by vines, awaiting their fate. The plant starts to bring Rocket closer to its jaws. I am Groot. The plant looks down. I am Groot. The plant's face. Sorry. The plant face slithers to the Groot's level. He smiles and looks in admiration. It sniffs him twice. <laughs> Seemingly, deciding he's neither a threat or a meal, he looks back to Rocket. Groot just stares. 
heartbroken. Groot. He looks up to see the guardian dangling. We're more than your friends, pal. The plant brings Rocket closer, but he only looks at Groot. We're your freaking family. As Rocket gets closer to the jaws, he closes his eyes. The petals are unhinged. A green drool flows from the inside its mouth. It's about to bite down. Squish! Shriek! A long, sharp branch is inside the jaws, starting from underneath and reaching to a point above. Groot is stabbing it from the ground. I am Groot! Shriek! Groot roars. He stabs it again with his other arm and then pulls them in opposite directions, ripping the flower face apart as green goop flows out. All of the guardians drop to the ground. Rocket stands up and brushes himself off. off. Groot runs up to his ankle and hugs it. I am Groot. Rocket scoops him up and holds him to his chest. I know, buddy. You are in love. Love makes you do stupid things. Just ask any of us. Groot looks around to see his family, brushing themselves off and smiling him, smiling at him. We'll be here to help you when you mess up. And by the looks of it, you'll, you will be too. Groot hugs Rocket again. He places him back on his shoulder. The Guardians of the Galaxy walk in, walk in the alien sunset towards their ship. Cut to black. Cut to interior Milano, Groot's quarters. Groot sits atop a metal drawer that has been made into a bed. He's playing a retro handheld video game that he is too small to hold and instead plays it standing on it using his foot stumps as, to control it. <laughs> Star looks on in the background and walks over. Hey, Groot. Game over sound. Groot grunts in frustration. He <laughs> looks at Star-Lord in rage. Uh, did I ever tell you about this time I was with an Azkavarian girl? Groot looks at him confused. He slowly turns his head and looks back at the handheld device and kicks it to a new game. The end. Yay! Woo! We did so good! Love it. So Marvel, that was our that was Ryan's uh, spec script for <laughs> I Am Groot Season 2. If you want to get in contact with us, you can email us at filmboyspodcast at gmail.com. So. Yeah, never mind me tripping over my own spelling mistakes. It's fine. And just so okay. Marvel knows, we've always been risk takers. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want any of us to ever like replace an actor mm -hmm. or anything, like obviously, yeah. yeah. Um, if you want us to just be a think tank for future Marvel ideas, oh we got them. Yeah, um, we yeah. we have thousands of ideas about Marvel. Just millions. <laughs> Um, well, thank you guys for watching our awesome I Am Groot table read. Uh, if you want to watch some more of us, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to listen to us through your ear holes, uh, if you want to listen to us through those ear holes, I did it again. Like um, <laughs> if you want to uh, go subscribe to our podcast, we, we're we really good at audio, as you can tell. Uh, I totally did podcast. too fast. No, it was perfect, Ryan. You were perfect. <laughs> Go subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcatcher, uh, Film Boys Podcast, where we walk Michael through the entire MCU in timeline order. And Michael has not seen any Marvel movies before this. So it's a very cool and interesting way to explore the conglomerate, the huge, the huge beast of the Marvel uh, cinematic universe and it's very interesting to actually see like a fresh perspective on the entire thing so go subscribe and share it with your friends thank you guys for watching our table read i'm sam i'm sean i'm ryan i am groot and this is <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, bye. bye.